wholeness, wholeness, man. Listen, I got to go in. I got to show you this. So listen, man, it's been a long time. I, I done, this actually the third attempt, man. I done did intros, all kind of stuff. But somehow, some reason, my, my, my electronics are starting to mess up because I'm going to put this information out there to y'all, man. So I don't even want to waste y'all time. I just want to go straight in on it to give y'all an understanding of what I'm actually trying to show you. Uh, I, I, you know, not long ago, man, I was explaining to you about, you know, uh, how does government actually be having ways to use technology to manipulate the frequencies of not only, uh, you know, the electronics around you, but also yourself. And without going too far into a long drawn out speech on it, man, because I swear, like, you got to think, I just said, this is literally the third time I have been, like, going through trying to get this going. And somehow I just can't get it going. It's like my electronics just all of a sudden, every time I get it going, messing up. So because it's just a recording, I got to start all over again. Now, this time I'm just going all the way in. I want y'all to follow me with this, man. I'm going to show y'all something. I promise you, this will literally change the way that you see everything. This will change the way that you view people. This will change the way that you see the things that your government is really doing to you and behind your back. This will change the way you look at your pastor. This will just change everything for you, I promise. But it doesn't have to change everything for the worst. It can literally change everything inside of your reality for the best right now. Because I promise the one thing that you can do with knowledge, the one thing that you can do with information is build with it. And if you can build an entire external reality with just information alone, then what do you think you can do with it internally? How much more do you think you can build inside of yourself? Regain a more in-depth knowledge of self because we have learned to externalize our consciousness so much that we have lost touch with the spiritual realm. And this is the reason we don't understand some of the things that people discuss when they get to discussing spirituality, because these things are not uh, experienceable by, uh, by so many people because of the level of consciousness. And the consciousness is really just based off of your degree of perceptions, your belief systems. You see what I mean? Now, everything has a broad or a vast explanation that can be given for it. But everything also has a much uh, simpler explanation that can be given for it that can give a person the ability to understand what you're communicating to them because it's not the most important topic of the subject. So it can just, you know, go in just to help transition one point to the next. And that's really what I'm trying to do with y'all because I'm going to show you something that I promised. Being able to see all of this, and most of the people that I know, I know a lot of people, a lot of the people that are, you know, especially where I come from, this is going to be the first time that you guys hear some of this or actually get to see and hear as much of this information inside of one space at one time as you possibly can. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I love y'all, man, and I mean this. Like you got a lot of parasitic brothers and sisters, man, that, you know, they want y'all to, it's always just some, like they use negative energy to keep your attention, get your attention and keep your attention. Every time they hit the microphone, there's something negative. Every time they hit the waves, there's something negative. That's because it's parasitism, man. They are parasites. These brothers and sisters may be vegans and vegetarians, but they have never really detoxed a good cleanse meaning literally flushed all of those parasites out of their body and then done it on a continuous basis because parasites, once you flush them out today, it doesn't mean that you don't have to do this for another year or so. No, man, you should be literally flushing your body at the end of the week. I mean, at the end of the month, that last uh, week, and my, me and my brother, you know, I'm uh, Haru, we came up with an idea that we're going to stop using the word week to explain that seven day cycle or that seven day being so what we're you know what i'm saying just you know grow with us man grow with us we moving baby but i just want to give y'all a basic understanding man so that you actually see why 
the world is being created and constructed right around you, using you without your knowledge. Please stay with me, family. I got to share this screen, man. I don't want to go too far into it because I got a lot of information to give y'all. One second, one second, one second. I gotta. I gotta make this happen, family. Hold on. This is what I was trying to say to man. It's it's like that. Like you know, look. It's really up, but because I'm trying to give y'all this information, it's gonna mess up. I promise. It it be like that. Let's go, family. I, hey, I love y'all, man, and we ain't got time to be playing. We finna get straight into this so that y'all can see what I'm talking about. And this is show you, and this is reason. And this is the reason it be hard to bring people that real, true, authentic, genuine information because of shit like this right here. You see, it's already messing up on me. Advanced technologies now, and all these talks about microchips. The military started doing a lot of uh, research. On the absolute cutting edge of innovation, including many CEOs from the world's most successful businesses. Yeah, but you know, EG&G, on one of the plants is on the edge of the Area 51. They're the ones manufacturing the implants that you're taking out of these abduction victims. You, know, you don't need an RF frequency plant chip to track anybody. They're not coming from outer space. They don't need that. If you're interstellar, you're transdimensional because their technologies are way beyond that. I said, this is human. Project will be at one time or another. Now, for those of you that don't know what Project Bluebeam is, it is a military project working with the hidden hand, the dark government, the deep state, the elites, whatever you want to call them, where they will use holographic projectors along with voice-to-skull technology. When you're so tied into these technologies, you're not really seeing what's going on in the real world. All the things that are going on today, like surveillance, hacking of, of, of phones. And the intelligence community, what I discovered was amazing. There has been a plan in existence since about 1917, create an artificial extraterrestrial threat to this earth in order to create a one world totalitarian socialist government. The Project Blue Beam. Project Bluebeam is a top secret operation of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA for short, of the United States of America. Project Bluebeam is divided into four steps. his death had developed a, an electronic system in 1956 that would enable someone electronically to remote view anywhere. This was taken right up the road from me in Maine, the state of Maine, and it's an incredible rectangular moon. This right here appears to be a fake moonrise going horribly wrong. That is not a round rock in the sky. And, you know, just monitoring you through your laptop, that, all of this kind of thing. Um, one of the big problems is that the vast majority of the population aren't complaining about it. They just get on with their lives. Nevertheless, an effective political substitute for war would require alternate enemies, some of which might seem equally far-fetched in the context of the current war system. It may be, for instance, that gross pollution of the environment can eventually replace the possibility of mass destruction by nuclear weapons as the principal substitute for war. I'll come outside to look at this because it looks like a sunray at sunset. The sun's already set, so I'm thinking it's just an unusual sunray. And they were developed decades ago. 
Now, how hard is it to deploy them? Not hard. And they're not used every day. They're used enough to create a groundswell of conviction that there's an alien threat. So you take that capability, combine it with man-made UFOs, combine it with disinformation in general about the subject, and also certain chemicals, and you can launch an entire... Step one. The first step in the NASA Blue Beam project concerns the breakdown of all archaeological knowledge. We will see more and more hoax discoveries, where these new discoveries will finally explain to all people the error of all fundamental religious doctrines. The falsification of this information will be used to make all nations believe that the religious doctrines have been misunderstood for centuries. That is not a normal, I mean, what is that? The top of a mushroom? You know what I'm saying? It simply looks like a glitch. A glitch in the matrix. Project Blue Beam isn't working properly. Holograms on a battlefield would be to divert the attention of the enemy to deliver propaganda or... Contagion of fear that's based on completely man-made false events. Advanced technologies, you know, and all these talks about microchips. The military started doing a lot of uh, research into sort of implanting chips in troops and also you know sort of even like cyborg technology you know integrated into into the troops as well poisoning of the air and of the principal sources of food and water supply is already well advanced and at first glance would seem promising in this respect it constitutes a threat that can be dealt with only through social organization and political power step two the second step is about creating a gigantic space light show with 3D holograms and sounds, laser projections of multiple holographic images. You think holograms are science fiction? Just Google 3D hologram on YouTube. phenomenon it has all the earmarks of the most successful most sophisticated mind control operation in the history of the world and you are ignoring it step three the third step is a telepathic electronic two-way communication with extra low frequency very low frequency low frequency powerful waves which are able to reach everyone on earth Using H8RP wave technology, ELF H8RP waves can be directly projected into the brain, causing the brain to receive messages. Something very frightening to make the enemy run away if you think that he will believe that what you are sending is really an angel, um, a devil, a UFO. That very well possibly there's going to be an alien invasion. Mm -hmm. And the government knows it. Right. And consequently, they are trying to prepare the people. Create the possibility in the minds of the people of the world that we are being threatened from some other species, from some other planet, and do it in a way that if anybody questions it, or challenged it, or wants to talk about it publicly, that they are ridiculed. They wanted to see how the people will react if you, if the people really thought that there was an alien invasion from another world. It was called uh, War of the Worlds. Step four, electronic universal supernatural manifestation designed to deceive will create the following illusion make mankind believe an alien invasion is imminent. How are they going to project the images on the sky? Well, if this is your question, then you have to get back to step two, and research on 3D holograms. trying to show y'all and I'm trying to really give it to y'all because listen man like this is the one thing we don't got time for no more is to plan 
let me get let me get this out of here real fast. Let me make sure it's not playing because see, I'm finna I'm finna take you right on down into it, man. Like I know a lot of y'all probably remember this movie too, and it was called uh, MK Ultra. And you see, uh, we're gonna deal with a couple of difficulties with this electronic stuff right now. I'm just, hey, look, man, I gotta get this information to y'all, man. I'm finna take y'all into something, brother. I, I'm like, where are we finna go with this one? I didn't even expect it, you know what I'm saying? Be uh, you know, in the moment right now. You see how it, it, it's continued. Just trust me, man. And I, I never really had no problem with my electronics, brother. I'm just trying to make sure it's not finna play when I. Life doesn't have to be this hard. Just because you lost your car insurance. At the general, payments are low. Let me close that out. So we ain't even got that problem. So now, I don't even, uh, so let's go right here first. Now I'm gonna give you this. Just so you know, people don't be thinking like, man, people be making this up, right? Like your government don't be hiding this stuff, man. They vocal about this stuff. You know, the information is like, it's out there. And I'm gonna explain to you where these MK Ultra files and stuff come from too, man. And right here, I actually came into contact this man with the grace of one of my big brothers, man. Uh, you know, here at Secret Energy. All right, first and foremost, the CIA tells Columbia, Princeton of secret behavior research, right? <clears throat> Let me make sure, from now. I just gotta make sure y'all got this, man. Y'all getting all of this. Does it say my screen sharing is paused? So let me get back into it. Jump on the mic some. Uh, let me get back, John. Hold it. People say this nigga trying to be a rapper too now. I don't rap, I'm just a smart nigga. Hey. <laughs> All right, so listen, the Central Intelligence Agency has informed Columbia and Princeton universities that they are among 86 institutions where secret research is believed to have been conducted in an attempt by the agency to develop ways to manipulate the behavior of human beings. Spokesman for the university said on Wednesday, the agency did not indicate what kinds of experiments were carried out at the universities when they were done and who participated. The spokesman said, nor they said, did the agencies indicate whether the experiments resulted in deaths or injuries? Now, it goes on over here to just, you know what I'm saying, let me just get down into it. Uh, a team of New York Times reporter disclosed the scope and general outline of the CIA's investigation into the behavior uh, and thought control. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the CIA's investigations into the behavior and thought control ranging over 25 years and costing some $25 million. And article, so you got to understand man, what these people are doing with their money. Uh, at a Senate hearing, right, a Senate hearing on August 3rd, uh, admin Stansfield Turner, the director of Central Intelligence Agent, uh, you know, Central Intelligence, whatever, gave additional details, including the fact that S6 and, uh, was, I'm sorry, I don't know what that, maybe 86 institutes, I'm sorry, yeah, 86 institu uh, institutions were involved. He said the agency had financed the work of 185 non-government researchers at these institutions, universities, hospitals, prisons, and pharmaceutical companies. Now, you hear that? Just so y'all don't get, y'all, you know, y'all get a clear understanding. He said the agency had financed and worked, I mean, I'm sorry, financed the work of 185 non-government researchers at these institutions universities, hospitals, prisons, and pharmaceutical companies on 149 separate research projects. Admiral Turner said a few days after the hearing uh, that the CIA would notify the institutions that appear to have been involved in the program, but that they would have to decide whether they wanted their roles made public. They would have to decide this. Now, let me just go ahead and uh, skip you over a little bit. I just want to get you into this other one because I got some more. Listen, that ain't, uh -uh, that ain't it. I'm gonna enclose a few of my links, man, so y'all can, you know, get a, uh, you know, a real good understanding of what's popping right here, right now. Man, Project MK Ultra. How many people know about Project uh, Project MK Ultra? All right. 
sometimes referred to as the CIA's mind control program, was the code name given to an illegal and clandestine program of experiments on human subjects designed and undertaken by the United States Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. Experiments on humans were in, uh, intended to identify and develop drugs and procedures to be used in interrogations and torture in order to weaken the individual to force confessions through mind control. Organized through the Scientific Intelligence Division of the Central Intelligence Agency, which is the CIA, the project coordinated with the Special Operations Divisions of the United States Army's Chemical Corps. The program began in the early 1950s, was uh, officially sanctioned in 1953, was reduced, uh, reduced in scope in 1964, further curtailed in 1967, and officially halted in 1973. The program engaged in many illegal activities. In particular, it was unwitting U.S. and uh, Canadian citizens as its test subjects, which led to the controversy regarding its legitimacy. Now, let me go on a little bit further down for you right fast, right fast. Now, in 1977, I just want to go down and first, now, first of all, let me go back up here a little bit, right up here, right? Where it says, the scope of the project MKUltra was abroad with research undertaken at 80 institutions, including 44 colleges and uh, universities, as well as hospitals, prisons, and pharmaceutical companies. The CIA operated through these institutions using front organizations, although sometimes top officials at these institutions were aware of the CIA's involvement. As the, C, uh, as the Supreme Court later noted, MKUltra was concerned with the research and development of chemical, biological, and radiological materials capable of employment and clandestine operations to control human behavior. Now you gotta understand what would these people, this is your government spending all of this money and attention and focus and resource on learning how to literally not just manipulate but control the behaviors of people. Just check this out. Now, in 1977, the Freedom of Information Act requested uncovered a cache of 20,000 documents relating to Project MKUltra, which led to Senate hearings later that same year. Yeah, real Senate hearings. So look it up. For people that you know want to be like, hey, man, it's going to be a lot of things that you actually uh, don't hear here that you're not going to want to, you know what I'm saying, face or want to be you know, face to face with right now, especially about your government, man, just to see that, you know, these people really never cared about us. Anyway, let me get over here, man. Let me let me, let me scroll down for y'all, right? Uh, okay, now, the uh, Dr. Sidney Gutler approved of an MK Ultra subproject on LSD uh, in his June 9, 1953 letter. Precursor's experiment in 1945, the Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency was established and given direct responsibility for Operation Paperclip. The program recruited former Nazi scientists some of whom had been identified and prosecuted as war criminals during the Nuremberg trials. Now, when y'all get to saying it, and I, you know, I know a lot of people didn't want to believe when I was explaining that America never defeated Germany. Like, there's an agreement. All America went to Germany for was they just wanted the scientists because they had already knew that Hitler was involved or so uh, far ahead technologically you know what I'm saying, in weaponry and weaponry technology than them. It was beating them at their own game. So now, let me get with it. So, uh, several secret US government projects grew out of Operation Paperclip. These projects included Project Chatter, established 1947, and Project Bluebird, established 1950. Now, which was renamed Project Artichoke in 1951. Their purpose was to study mind control, interrogation, behavior, modification. You hear that? Interrogation, behavior, modification, and related topics. So now, let's get down here. The project's intentionally oblique CIA cryptonym is made up of the diagraph MK, meaning that the project was sponsored by the agency's technical services staff followed by the word ultra, which had previously been used to designate the most secret classification of World War II intelligence. Other related cryptonyms include Project MK Naomi and Project MK Delta. 
headed by Sidney Gottlieb, the MK Ultra project was started on the order of CIA director Alan Walsh Dulles in April uh, 13, 1953. Its aim was to develop mind controlling drugs for use against a, uh, the Soviet bloc, largely in response to alleged Soviet, Chinese, and North Korean use of mind control techniques on US prisoners of war in Korea. The CIA wanted to use similar methods on their own captives. So just understand, like I said, man, listen, they did all of this because, you know, dude, they was, hey, look, they weren't, they was, they weren't in the game yet. They weren't in the race yet. And they had just, you know, uh, lost, you know, uh, you know, the little Watergate scandal. I'm gonna get to that. The CIA was also interested in being able to manipulate foreign leaders uh, with such techniques and would later invent several schemes to drug Fidel Castro. Experiments were often conducted without the subject's knowledge or consent. In some cases, like we're doing now, academic researchers being funded through grants and CIA front organizations were unaware that their work was being used for their pur uh, these purposes. Now, in 1964, the project was renamed MK Search. The project attempted to produce a perfect truth drug for use in interrogating suspected Soviet spies during the Cold War and generally to explore any other possibilities of mind control. Another MKUltra effort, Subproject 54, was the Navy's top secret perfect concussion program, which was supposed to use suboral frequency blasts to erase memory. Come on, man. Y'all gotta pay attention to what these people, like, let's go, man. Come on here, man. Listen, man, in 1964, the project was renamed MK Search, but what they was on, the project attempted to produce a perfect truth drug for the use of interrogating suspected Soviet spies during the Cold War, and generally to explore any other possibilities of mind control. Another MK effort, Subproject 54, was the Navy's top secret project concussion program, which was supposed to use suboral frequency blast to erase memory. However, the program was never carried out. Yeah, it was carried out. That's the one thing I can assure you because the Rockefellers are not in the position that they are in today. Hitting stuff like this right, but you know what, we gonna get to that. Let me, let me, let me, let me slow down because I don't wanna rush into no, you know, let you say fools rush in. I wanna stay right into a nice pace so I can give y'all this information, nice clean cut. So you can see just how these people are literally fucking up your conscience, creating real live walk-in portals out of humans, controlling the direction and destiny of the souls of these beings without the beings actually even knowing that this is taking place. Now, the agency poured millions of dollars into studies examining methods of influencing and controlling the mind and of enhancing their ability to extract information from resistant subjects during interrogation. Some historians have asserted that creating a Manchurian candidate, now I know a lot of y'all know about the Manchurian candidate. If you don't, just go ahead and get into it. Right now, I'm just trying to keep this flow going so that I can get all of this information in to you in a nice, reasonable amount of time and still have, you know, just a little bit of room to actually expound and give you a quick breakdown of how important it is for us actually to come together and unify the processes right now. Okay, uh, now uh, to create a Manchurian candidate through subject, uh, uh, subject through mind control techniques was a goal of MK Ultra and related CIA projects. Alfred McCoy has claimed that the CIA attempted to focus media attention on these sorts of ridiculous programs so that the public would not look at the primary goal of the research, which is developing effective method of torture and, and, and interrogation. Such authors cite as one example that the CIA's Kubark interrogation manual refers to studies at McGill University and that most of the uh, techniques recommended at Kubark are exactly those that researchers Donald Ewan Cameron used on his test subjects, sensory deprivation, drugs, isolation, etc. Now, one 1955 MKUltra document gives an indication of the size and range of the effort. This document refers to the study of an assortment of mind-altering substances described as follows. Let me give them to you, baby. Let's go. One of these, substances which will promote uh, illogical thinking and impulsiveness to the point where the recipient would be, uh, be discredited in public. Do you hear this, man? 
these people are keeping a real time record, a memoir or whatever you want to call it on what they're creating, using and building. And like, it's, it, they're not hiding it. It's just that they're not placing it inside of the places where they teach us or nurture our senses to actually be uh, excited about venturing. Like for the most part, especially with black people, right? If it ain't on BET or MTV or something like that, we probably ain't gonna find it anyway. Like they say, wanna hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. Now, here we go. I know y'all, you know, don't like that, but man, listen, I'm just keeping it a thousand right now, man. I, I ain't offended by words. Substances with increase in efficiency of mentation and perception. You hear that, man? Substances which increase the efficiency of mentation and perception. Materials which will cause the victim to age faster slash slower in maturity. And I guarantee you, y'all will be surprised to know how much of these things they're putting inside of your very food. You see what I'm saying? Now, materials which will promote the intoxicating effect of alcohol, materials which will produce the signs and symptoms of recognized diseases in a reversible way so that they may be used for malingering, etc., like Margellans, right? Materials which will cause temporary slash permanent drain, uh, brain damage and loss of memory, substances which will enhance the ability of individuals to withstand privation, torture and coercion during interrogation and so-called brainwashing. Materials and physical uh, methods which will produce amnesia for events preceding and during their use. Physical methods of producing shock and confusion over extended periods of time and capable of surreptitious use. Substances that produce physical disablement such as paralysis of the legs, acute anemia, etc. Substances which will produce a chemical that can cause blisters. Substances which will alter personality structure in such a way that the tendency of the recipient to become dependent upon another person is enhanced. A material which will cause mental confusion of such a type that the individual under its influence will find it difficult to maintain a fabrication under questioning. Substances which will lower the ambition and general working efficiency of men when administered in undetectable amounts. Oh man, they get it in, baby. Um, a knockout pill, which can surreptitiously be administered in drinks, food, cigarettes, as in aerosol, etc., which will be safe to use, provide a maximum of amnesia, and be suitable for use by aging types, and I mean on an ad hoc basis. A material which can be surreptitiously administered by the above routes, and which in very small amounts will make it impossible for a person to perform physical activity. Man, listen to the shit that these people are showing you, man. And I, listen, I don't even want to go all the way into it. I, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot. You see what I'm saying? But I'm going to actually enclose this document, man, so that you can get an understanding of what I'm bringing you to. Now, let's go into it, baby. Mind control, right? Now, let's get there. Global mind control. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going off. Hold on. Right now, when, okay, y'all y'all follow me on this one. When one has control over the thoughts of one's mind, one has control over the directions and actions of the physical body, all of its parts and reclaiming the soul's energies. Whoever controls the mind controls the soul. Mind control is used to form socially acceptable belief systems and shape values such as, which are used to control the masses to enslave themselves on planet Earth. God, religious, uh, violence, gender issues, financial and debt enslavement, consumptive modeling, misogyny, and sexuality are the most mind-controlled and manipulated belief systems promoted by this NAA, which would serve as to be like a negative alien agenda, because I'm going to explain all of that too. What we call alien is not extraterrestrial, but intraterrestrial. And their human power relate to continue the enslavement and vampirism of humanity and planetary resources. Now, just let, let me show you something, man. When I go into, when I say, okay, uh, uh, who these people is, yeah. So I'm gonna show you something. You see this, you know who this is, right? Everybody wanna uh, believe that these people were Africans or that these people were original black people or you see what I'm saying? Hey, listen, man, Egyptians and Africans were not the same people first and foremost. Now, I'm, I already uh, did a video about who these people were. These are the Paracas people, right? 
but not just what you would call the Paracas people. These, they have genetics inside of the uh, uh, Paracas, Peru, the foothills of Peru, which is Paracas. Now this, you see this, come on, man. These are these people. This is the reason that they wear these big old hats to cover their head. Now inside of these different religions, you got, you know, everybody going through doing all of this stuff, just really, they just doing it because they're just, you know, following custom, like, like my bro say, costumes, customs, it's the same thing. Well, let's get back to this real fast. Now, mind control is used to form socially acceptable belief systems and shape value systems in which are used to control the masses to enslave themselves on planet Earth. God, religious violence, gender issues, financial and debt enslavement, consumptive modeling, misogyny, and sexuality. Now, let's get a little bit further down to it. Let me go further, further, further. Mind control is used to form socially acceptable belief systems and shape anti-human value systems in the deaf culture. Now, we'll go down a little bit further, right? Oh, 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 hey, now, let me keep going. What do I mean, like, which direct thoughts, uh, which direct thoughts are in contradiction to each other, like war and killing for peace? And we know religions are so cold at this, man. Mind control is used to form socially acceptable belief systems and shape anti-human value systems and a death culture, which direct thoughts that are in contradiction to each other, like war and killing for peace. As long as the planet is at war with itself, and humanity thinks that we are at war with each other, we feed into the mind control system of this NAA, which allows them to continue the vampirism of the planetary resources. Now, mind control frequencies and forms of electronic harassment generate bioneurological impairment in the human body, which reverse and confuse brain signals. Now, stay with me, baby. Mind control frequencies and forms of electronic harassment generate bioneurological impairment in the human body, which reverse and confuse brain signals. The satanic agenda is to reverse human neurological functioning by conditioning the person to create and feel pain in order to activate their pleasure sensors. Now, or their pleasure centers. The cycle of interconnection made between pain and pleasure centers is reinforced and conditioned into the bioneurology nonstop, which escalates into harmful addictions or deviant behaviors. Now, let me go a little bit further. Let me get a little bit further down here for you real fast. I got to go up into this one. Mind control technologies are weapons used, uh, uh, which use electronic microchip implants, nanotechnologies, microwaves, and other and or electromagnetic waves to subvert an individual's sense of control over their own thinking, behavior, emotions, or decisions, or decision making by attacking the brain and nervous system. The development of these methods and technologies has a long history. And this is the reason that I was trying to explain to y'all, man, that what these people are actually doing is, man, I force you not, that they have computer technology, man, where they can upload and download thoughts, meaning that they're uploading your thoughts and downloading your thoughts, downloading them into a hard drive where they can actually play back those thoughts, revisit your thoughts, fast forward your thoughts, wipe your thoughts clean. And what I'm trying to show you is that they learn during the time of uh, I, I forgot the guy's name, but I do have that information as well, man, where he created the science behind understanding how scalar waves function, that once you uh, change the frequency or manipulate the frequency of a uh, particle, it immediately, you know, uh, 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 causes the other particles to uh, respond in like manner to match the frequency. So if it was a positive charge, then it would automatically balance with the negative charge. But anyway... I just want to get a little bit deeper into this because it's a little bit more than I bring it to you. Now I'm going to take all of y'all time. We're going to have a live open discussion about this, man. Now, to impact and manipulate human consciousness, all that is required is to create a complex signal through a frequency following response. When the brain locks onto an external signal coming from, environment, coming from the environment, it begins to mirror that signal. The signal can be a carrier wave of a spectrum of frequency designed to create feelings of distress or trigger emotional pain. As a result, the brain chemistry alters and changes, generally plummeting the person's consciousness into a range of lower negative emotions and confused perceptions. Like, for instance, you ever just been sitting around, man, doing something or thinking about doing things or, you know, had your mind fixed on something and just out of nowhere, other thoughts will actually invade your consciousness or that conscious space right then and there, uh, forcing you to feel a different way than man. I'm trying to show you how these people have already known hundreds of years ago, basically, 
how to do these things thousands of years ago, technically, if you really want to get all the way off into it. But I'm only just going to keep you relevant to what's taking place right now, things that your government is actually doing and the reasons that they're doing. Now, large populations can be sent frequencies that are designed to incite agitation, aggression, or anxiety into specific dem uh, demographic areas. And then they put out news feeds in the mainstream media to incite fear, blame, and promote sensationalism and victimization language in order to signal out certain marginalized groups for the intention of targeting them towards being perceived as the enemy, therefore, or thereby inciting violence, rape, hostility, and criminal behaviors. It is possible to modulate signals on any electromagnetic carrier for transmitting a message into the brain to alter chemistry, insert thought forms, and instigate behaviors for shaping or grooming that person to carry out some harmful or criminal action. So now, when y'all get to asking yourself, how can these people do some of these things that you're starting to see taking place inside of the reality? You don't understand. When I say that these technologies are not real technologies, they're weaponry technologies. You just view them as technologies. And because you don't understand the type of things that these different weaponry technologies have compatible or the capabilities of being able to do, the signals that they actually have the capability of being able to send and transmute through your DNA, then you don't really pay too close or too much attention to some of the shit that's taking place. So it's a lot of times when I tell you to stop judging people and start protecting yourself, gird yourself, come together with the people that's closest to you. Because why? We are the ones that are under attack from the things that are taking place. They're sending electromagnetic frequencies, elf waves into our communities that are causing not only just whole genetic mutations, but causing people to do things and think in crazy ways. And this is what I'm trying to tell you, that that voice that's inside of your head is not that, it's not supposed to be there. It was implanted there. But because it is an artificial intelligence program, an AI program, literally running on a duality server inside of your own consciousness, you're experiencing what you're experiencing or being able to actually have your consciousness hacked because of you're not or not being aware of it. Let's just get a little bit further into it, man, because like I say, I'm going to have a more live and open debate and discussion about this. I'm pushing this information out there, giving it to you in the raw so that we can break it down. You see what I mean? So now here we go. Now, let's go here. Alien implants work in the human body similarly as the chemical process of geoengineering is used in spraying chemicals in the skies. Alien implants are a bioengineering technology designed to shape the human body into the submission to NAA agendas while chemical nanoparticle geoengineering is used to control the weather by harming the ozone layer and create excessive methane gases, as well as assorted pathological mutations. Now, let's go into it, baby, holographic inserts. The dead light matrices also reflect the artificially bent light holographic inserts, which contain the controlled versions of the nature of this reality, such as these crucifixion implants, and these are also shattering and exploding systematically into other, uh, into the outer fields of the planet. These are false realities, artificial holographic inserts uh, that we uh, have thought were real and then developed mental beliefs that hail that specific version of reality and its timelines kept in place. So get into this. These are false realities, artificial holographic inserts that we have thought were real and then developed mental beliefs that held that specific version of reality and its timelines kept in place. Now, as these false realities are shattered into pieces for those maintaining energetic balance in this explosive terrain, we can read the signature of those dead light pieces that reflect the nature of this disease and its schism, holographic in, uh, inserts, work like a software program. So, you know, it goes all the way in, man. And you know, I'm going just down here a little bit so I can get into here now. In the application of the NRG coded implant, its mechanism acts like a tick or a leech that burrows itself deeper into the lower areas of the astral body, mostly into the second chakra and into the instinctual response functions of the central nervous system. From the second layer of the layer, in, okay, I'm sorry, from the second level of layer infection, if the addiction becomes severe over time, 
repetitive destructive uh, response to external stimulus, it eventually embeds itself deeper into the matrix of the body. A false web work, like a film or a spider web, is an overlay on the nervous system. Sections become infected until the entire system is infected. Winds up in the spore, uh, and it winds up in the spinal cord and will have a trigger mind control implant placed in the back of the head and neck. Once the implant is fully embedded and operational, severe addiction and mood swings occur as the target becomes more bipolar. This area is the atomic doorway, the ninth chakra, where the inner spirit light reflects out of the eyes. That light will die or become dead in the eyes after this implant takes over the body. The implant is a reptilian brain implant that is placed in the structure of the brain stem via the medulla obligata. Now, let's go, let's go. Now, military gray aliens has been artificially written into the various reversal field grid networks as well as have manifested independent harm from their technology of military prop. Hold, hold, it, hold, it, hold it, let's go here. Military gray alien technology has been artificially written into the various reversal grid networks as well as have been manifested independent I mean, as well as have manifested independent harm from their technologies and military weapons, genetic experiments, timeline programs, holographic inserts, and astro uh, mirages, astro mirages, right? Human abductions, tagging slash tracking, and astro plane manipulation. A massive 5D base and 3D time fold connector point was in Lima, Peru. Now, I was just showing you what those people right there, right? Those big headed uh, people from Paracas, Peru, right? So just stick with me, baby. Uh, holographic inserts and astral mirages, human abductions, tagging slash trafficking, and astral plane manipulation. A massive 5D base and 3D time field connector point was in Lima, Peru, on the coast in the country of Miraflores. Mira, Miraflores is Spanish for looking at the flowers. The flowers they were, uh, they were looking at, in this case, is the living lotus flower of a Christed pure diamond heart complex. This alien machinery is used to create Anubian black hearts, which are a part of metatronic reversal, uh, metatronic reversal current that is designed to shatter the permanent seed atom of the crystal heart and manifest dark flowering in the planet of humanity. This base was planning more aggressive technology usage, which I mean, with the upcoming electrical peak and uh, simultaneous five-dimensional frequencies, activation coming into this three-dimensional reality and made from the Machu Picchu 5D vortex. Now, I know y'all, everybody that heard of the Machu Picchu uh, 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 vortex and its intersections with the 7D phantom system parallels. Now, I just want to go, you know, keep going. I just want to keep going. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Here. Let's go into this nanotech, right? So, what is nanotech? Nanotechnology is a manipulation of matter on an atomic, molecular, or supermolecular scale. Nanotechnology has many applications being tested covertly and used to control the human population in psychotronic warfare or mind control methods, and also to track down people and to know what they are thinking. Okay, you better pay attention. This is a type of military alien technology used for artificial intelligence networks for brain mapping. Nanotechnology weapons such as Morgellons are self-replicating hollow fibers that are designed to read out the light fingerprint code of the DNA of the person infected with the alien implant technology and transform it into a signal that is detectable to be tracked, tested, and harvested. It appears to be self-assembly nanobot. Uh, it, it appears to be self-assembly nanobot technology related to transhumanist agenda of the archons for artificial harvesting. Now. Hold it. We, we, we ain't done. We ain't done. Now, nanorobots is emerging technology field creating machines and robots whose components are at or close to the scale of nanometer, 10 through 9 meters. More specifically, nanorobots or nanorobotics refer to the nanotechnology engineering discipline of designing and building nanorobots, which devices ranging in size from 0 0.1 through 10 micrometers and constructed of nanoscale and molecular components. The names nanobots, nanoids, nanites, nanomachines, or nanomites have also been used to describe these artificial intelligence devices currently under research and development. 
Many types of nanotechnologies are in full operation in the secret space programs and are already used by technolo uh, technologically advanced extraterrestrial races. Now, I'm just gonna keep it breezing, baby. So now, let's get in here, right? Synthetic telepathy is used to describe the process of brain-computer interfaces by which human thoughts are intercepted, processed, and, re uh, and a return signal is generated that is able to be communicated and perceived by the human brain, and that information can potentially be read through other interfaces. You check that out, man. Synthetic telepathy is used to describe the processes of brain-computer interfaces by which human thoughts are intercepted processed and a return signal is generated that is able to be communicated and perceived by the human brain and that information can potentially be uh, read through other interfaces can you hear what they are saying is you like man an example of multiple interfaces that could interact with synthetic telepathy and nanotechnology would be the network of physical devices that are included in the internet of things this is the larger mass consciousness network of physical devices vehicles, home appliances, and other items embedded with electronics, software sensors, actuators, or yeah, actual, yeah, actuators and connectivity with, which enables these things to connect, collective and exchange, uh, con connect, collect and exchange data. Now, I mean, listen to me, man. I'm not telling you this for no reason at all. In order for this stuff to be able to do this type of shit, man, that shit got to actually be able to manipulate the frequencies inside of your own body. It's communicating with you. It's actually manipulating your own frequencies. and your, It's implanting thoughts inside of your own mind. This voice is actually able to communicate with you and stimulate your senses and, you know, like urge you and like just pay attention to what I'm actually giving to you so that you can gain a much, much more broader view of what's taking place right now. And you will know how do you get all of this type of stuff out of your body by paying attention and staying in tune. Subscribe, bro. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Bioneurology, let's get into it, right? Now, when we look at the larger galactic picture of consciousness enslavement, we see the NAA's many-pronged agenda to target the brain and central nervous system and thought forms of every person on Earth through the agenda of transhumanism. We see the promotion of hybridization and synthetic integration with artificial neural networks for control over the central nervous system and brain. Now, get back to that. Through the agenda of transhumanism, we see the promotion of hybridization and synthetic integration with artificial neural networks for control over the central nervous system and brain. That language, man, if you don't understand what you'd be reading, then you would just be learning something for the hell of it. It's like you would just be gaining information, but then only understanding what you already really understood just from a more in-depth version or vision anyway versus just being able to take new information that you already didn't have and trash the old right so now let's go now what is starting to surface with more artificial neural networks for control okay i'm sorry what is starting to surface with more clarity is that our human neurobiology is wired for empathy which connects us to higher consciousness and has a spiritual function Right now, the NAA and their mission of soulless AI, which is artificial intelligence, infected synthetic beings, and I'm telling you, human beings are like this too. So you got to understand, do not have the bio circuitry for empathy. We are in essence in a struggle between human empaths and alien hybridized humans and extra dimensional aliens that are non empaths. This month, we will look more deeply at bio neurology and the bio circuitry of empathy for another layer of reveal how chemical agents and ELF are used, ELF is extremely low frequencies, are used to target the central nervous system and are actually destroying the human capacity for empathy. To understand how the stages of ascension and bioneurolo uh, bioneurological expansion increases the capacity for empathy, aligning us to the surface of others and planetary grid networks. Let's get it. Now, neurobiology and neuroscience are used interchange uh, interchangeably to refer to the branches of biology that focuses on the structure and function of the nervous system and brain. The field of neurobiology includes the study of biological neural networks in order to replicate their functions in the production of artificial neural networks. An artificial neural network is an artificial intelligence network that mimics the function of the central nervous system and brain of living things like people and animals. 
Did you get that? So you know, yeah, I ain't gonna reread it again. Cause if you want, you got to, you got to, got to plug in, man. Plug in. Now let's keep going. The discoveries in the field of neurobiology have led to the massive expansion and demand for mass consumer products manufactured in both of the flourishing multi-billion dollar industries of biotechnology and pharmaceuticals. Biotechnology is the use of living systems and organisms to develop or make products, especially with the focus upon the genetic manipulation of microorganisms and their chemical reactions. I'm telling you, man, these people is not playing. Currently, the means of gaining technological or pharmaceutical control over neural networks, brain mapping, genetic modification, and the exploitation of biological systems is an enormous commodity that is being merchandised on and off planet. The quest is gain, or the quest is to gain control over the bioneurology of life is a very big business, hiding a very dark secret. During the current bifurcation phase, the extremely heated debate around disclosure of the covert technological methods used for bioneurological uh, enslavement are being fought over in public arena, argued over behind closed doors, and rippling throughout the solar system. Now, I'm going down just a little bit further, man. There is little to no information available to help people understand that our bioneurological functions are directly responsible for interconnection with our spiritual bodies and that if our bioneurology is hacked, we are effectively disconnected from our emotions, heart, and soul. Therefore, there is little knowledge even given to the public about the nervous system's critical role in experiencing the energetic interconnection with life, including feeling empathy, spiritual awakening, cellular telepathy, and developing all forms of higher sensory perception. A brain being controlled by thought impulses sent from artificial neural networks does not feel empathy or connected with life. Thought, uh, the health and functioning of the central nervous system and brain are the most critical components in properly transmitting the DNA's electromagnetic signals and frequency impulses, which also communicate directly the etheric neural networks that exist within our soul, spirit, body. So I'm giving y'all this because, hey, listen, man, I just, I'm, 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 I'm tired of, you know what I'm saying, going through the rhythm of road with people that everybody just think that they know so much and everybody just arguing and bitching and griping about shit that they really don't know nothing about. And it's like we taking miscommunicated information and starting to argue and bitch and fight about that type of shit. And I'm just saying, man, listen, we got to get it. We got to get a grip on this shit, brother. Brain mapping. What is it, man? Brain mapping is a set of neuroscience techniques based on the mapping of biological properties onto spatial representations of the human or non-human brain that result in information maps. Brain mapping is further defined as the study of the anatomy and function of the brain and spinal cord through the use of imaging. You hear that? This also includes neurological imaging, which image the neurological structure, function, and impacts of pharma, uh, pharmacology or toxins upon a nervous system. Functional imaging of the neurological system and brain allow the processing of information in the brain to be visualized directly in images and mapped. Brain mapping can be read and analyzed directly by computerized systems and extraterrestrial or military personnel that can directly see what areas of the brain are being activated and which centers light up on the scan. To read brain maps and neurological imaging allows the data to be loaded into a computer for analysis or for any entity to have access to another person's thought identification or mind reading. This can, uh, this can happen in real time, in a moment and instantaneously, if the program has access to the person's brain and neurological system, both the function and the structure, along with all data content of the brain and neurological system can be analyzed. Clearly, this technology can be used for positive and negative effects. The current development of brain mapping technology is more advanced than the current medical system and science can be allowed or has been allowed. And it has been reversed explicitly, I mean, reserved explicitly for military intelligence programs. So man, listen, when I say that this information is not hidden from public, but if you more concerned with all of the dumb shit, then that's the stuff that you're gonna actually find because that's the stuff you're looking for. Sometimes we go into searching for information with this uh, biased perception already pre-developed inside of our subconscious. 
that we're not really looking for a neutral means or a neutral line of information. We're looking for something that actually aligns with our current perception. But when you go into this stuff with a neutral means or a neutral understanding, you find out in the end that you wind up inside of places and spaces like this right here. You see what I mean? So, and it just goes to show you that I'm the same person that at one point in time went to Moody Bible Institute to become an ordained minister. So it's not like I have no Christian background or religious background or anything else. It's just that I never not asked the proper questions. And I was never afraid that the questions existed. You see what I mean? It's like, later we'll, I, I, I'll get into, you know, explain it to you, you know, like why I've always been this way. Um, I'm just gonna go into this one for you real quick. So you'll see, man, what is this? Okay, our hologram works. Now, how holograms work? Our reality is a consciousness hologram. Holograms are manifestations of the properties of light, how light is produced and transmitted and how it interacts with self. The universe is a time matrix, consciousness hologram. Reality is projected as illusion of timelines within a hologram. All right, you hear me? Reality is projected as illusion of timelines within a hologram. I need you to get that. Reality is projected as illusion of timelines within the hologram. Our hologram is composed of grids of instruction sets, morphogenetic fields created by the source consciousness, then projected into awareness by electromagnetic energy at the physical matter and antimatter level. The hologram is created and linked through a series of web networks or multiple layers and grid matrices based upon or based on the patterns of sacred geometry or creational code language. The universal hologram has an alpha and omega, which includes all time cycles as beginning and ending simultaneously as collapse, I mean, as multidimensional consciousness evolves throughout the alchemy of time and space. As the grids collapse, everything within the hologram will collapse, helping to understand what is going on in the world today at the end of this ascension cycle. Now, let's go. I'm not gonna even uh, play with this one. Um, the human body is a holographic light projector. The human central nervous system for, uh, processes the electrical impulses transmitted from the DNA code, which further neurologically transmits to the brain the instructions set of the instruction sets to perceive external images as a context of reality. Now, you know, I've already went real deep into showing you how, you know, reality is actually configured inside of the brain. Like, I don't want to get too far off into it right now. If you are actually interested in, you know what I'm saying, like a more in-depth visual of all of that, you can go back into some of my earlier videos. Now, a person can only experience the levels of multidimensional reality that have been programmed into the DNA code and the personal 12 tree grid, these 12 uh, uh, planetary systems, man. And it's really 13, but I'm gonna show you how that, what, what happened though. There, it, it, there's a, 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 a good reason why they, you know, um, stigmatized number 13. The holographic template, right? Bam. Now, if we understand holograms and reflected light, we can begin to understand uh, understand the holographic architecture placed in the consciousness fields to bend or control the refraction of light and sound within an inorganic state of being. An organic, I mean, an inorganic state is defined as a state that was artificially built by an extra dimensional entity with the aim and goal of subversion, infiltration, and enslavement of beings subjected underneath its realms to its own reflection of light. Now, all of these ego filters, collective archetypes, addiction programs, mind control structures, alien implants, are examples of inorganic refractions of holographic architecture that, are, uh, that were artificially built in dead energy structures through frequency manipulation. This is how they were able to invade the planet without being physically seen and detected by the spiritually oppressed human masses. Now, you know, it's a whole bunch of this, man. I'm not even going to go all the way off into it because like I said, bro, hey, listen, I got all of this shit put together like this for a specific reason. It has taken me a long time to literally, and I mean literally a long ass time. That's the reason I actually just came together like, man, look. I'm just going to go ahead and push this shit out here like this right here right now because, man, for me to gather all of this information, gather all of this material, 
put all of this stuff together like this right here so that I can just spread out there to you in a, you know what I'm saying, formidable man. man it's been yeah, it's been it's, it's done took a long time, man. I promise. So let me give you let me give you this. What is consciousness wiping? Blank slating or consciousness wiping is a term that refers to mind wiping technology used by military personnel, usually in organized covert operations to remove current memories or accumulated intelligence of black operation projects when the projects or persons become obsolete. Blank slating technology has also been tracked remotely to observe that it has been applied to planetary grid work and ley lines by the NAA in their attempt to destroy planetary consciousness memories and historical records of the actual events on planets. Now, through blank slating the planetary consciousness field, such as the ley lines and horizontal networks, this renders many human beings in amnesia. And I know, man, I, I wish I had, I, I, I got another uh, image that I wish I had that I can put up in here, man. That, I want y'all to check out my brother Seven Seven Bomar, man. And uh, this was on the orders of the Tetragrammaton. And man, when I say he went in on this oh, on this amnesia, man, Seven Bomar, orders of the Tetragrammaton. Check that out. Um, okay, now through blank slate in the planetary continent fields, such as the ley lines and horizontal grid networks, this renders many human beings in amnesia and unable to recall or remember who they are and what their true origins are. This technology is very effective on human beings that exist in lower frequencies of the three layers of ego. It is less effective on star seeds, indigos, and people that tend to be naturally empathetic and intuitive. To, uh, this happens on the earth to people without their informed consent quite often. Now, we're gonna go into this real fast. Beast machine. Beast machine is another reference to alien machinery that is installed in the planetary grid networks with the purpose to erase the memories of historical facts and records and the collective consciousness of the human race and planetary logos. The NAA wants to erase and therefore eradicate the memories held in a planet that hold memories of the silicate matrix and a diamond sun body, which are of the original divine human design. By erasing these memories of our true history as a multidimensional star being, the human consciousness forgets how to access the inner spiritual technology of the higher DNA functions and the collective consciousness of the planet uh, rapidly, oh, and the collective consciousness of the planet rapidly uh, regresses. Through genetic digression, the population can be more easily controlled by the NAA intruders through implementing mind control as they desire to produce immortality for their races through the enslavement and parasitism of the human soul. Right? No, let me go down here. Let me go down here. We don't even wanna, I, I don't even want to uh, flood y'all with the. Uh, with the, with, with, the, with, the, with the fear of death thing, y'all want to go into this now? What is this? Let's go up right here. Right? Consciousness wiping is effective in, at creating programmable alters or alternate identities in other dimensions, which are used to perform a variety of tasks for the NAA and cabals. Sexual slavery is usually performed into one or more alternates, and so that the negative alien or human controller can maintain full mind control over the person's consciousness therefore have complete access to the body through the bioneurology. Man, I'm trying to show you. Now, in severe cases of mental splitting, when the extreme pain drives that person into disassociation, at the moment the person disassociates from their body, the soul psych manifests coping mechanisms to survive. To disassociate from the painful trauma felt in the body, the soul and mind will split into subpersonalities or create alternate identities. These are called alters. Disassociation and hidden alters with demonic bindings are especially common in rape cases and with extreme physical brutality and violence. Now, this alters, or the alters, are hidden in the unconscious mind by the fears of the inner child, which act to protect the conscious body, or the conscious mind, or the physical body from perceiving any more, or yeah, from perceiving any more painful trauma. Now, let me go back to that. Now, the alters are hidden in the unconscious mind by the fears of the inner child, which act to protect the consciousness mind or the spiritual, or I mean the physical body from perceiving any more painful trauma. Many times people cannot remember exactly what has happened to them until they have, an, they have another major injury or are hypnotically regressed or brought into altered states of consciousness. It is common for the person to remember what happened to them many years later because they have blocked out the time period where the extreme trauma abuse has occurred. Many people ignore past extreme trauma because they feel pressures to survive in a world. 
alters can be unintentionally created from split personality or splitting yeah, during any kind of traumatic events. Now, or specifically created and programmed as identity attachments that have certain belief systems. Alters that are programmed with specific belief systems can perform certain functions automatically and unconsciously, which they are triggered into that specific behavior. Now, I'm not gonna go too far all the way off into it because like I said, I'm just giving you a up close and personal on what's going on right here, right here, right here, baby. Let me, let me, let me go down into this, wait a minute. Let me get over here, right? Hold on. Now, one of the most paralyzing fears, I'm sorry. Now, one of the most paralyzing fears that humans have inherited from a process of this NA consciousness wiping is that most of us are terrified of the unknown and what happens after death. This is the result of having our spiritual identity and history taken away from us so that we don't remember who we really are as multidimensional beings. People have, I mean, people that have suffered severe trauma or abuse generally will have more intense crises of faith that fuse these fears related to unresolved spiritual conflicts around the death process. So if in the last year you have felt an intense rising of inner fears and anxiety that have become unmanageable and even miserable to uh, a helpful exercise will be to spend some time resolving the source of fears as related to addressing personal fears related to death. Now, when we prepare ourselves for the death process, we understand the death of the ego mind, and this is an important part of our commitment to developing our consciousness on a spiritual journey, because that's the only place that death actually exists at. Once you get out of your lower chakras, those lower three chakras, you understand that death is not real. Now, people that still believe in death or still don't understand death or still don't understand all of that, they might, hey, listen, you're still locked inside of those lower three chakras. That's just all. That's just it. Most people do not think of what they're going to experience or feel when they reflect on what they have done with their life on Earth, when they have transitioned to the next dimension. Now, when I have communicated with Earth-based humans that have passed their body, the most prevalent experience I found in the transmit, I mean, in the transit process is that many of these people felt very regretful. They had regret, I'm sorry, they had regret they didn't do more with their own, uh, with their life on Earth. They had regret that they did not love more unconditionally everyone. They had regret that fear had stopped them from achieving important events in their life that could have changed their timeline and improved the lives of future generations. Life goes on after we drop these physical bodies, and it is as real as you can feel yourself right now. It is even more real than our lifetimes spent on this earth. And this is something that I promise, like I can just, I've already been inside of what you would consider as the, the, the spaces of death. So I, I know what's there and like, you know, it, I know what it, you know, what it can be, what it would be like. I, I, I just understand so much about it now. And now I know what I'm doing. Now, mind uploading. I just want to give you some of this. The next extension of collecting data through the use of artificial intelligence brain mapping is mind uploading. Some transhumanists consider mind uploading an important proposed life extension technology. The goal of mind uploading is to recreate whole brain emulation, which has the ability to transfer the data from a human brain to a computational device, such as a digital analog, quantum-based or software-based artificial neural network. Then, from quantum computers, the brain that was mind uploaded can be controlled or manipulated in subspace. Many scientists believe that the human brain and mind define who we are based only on their information pattern, while the body or hardware that information is implemented upon is secondary and interchangeable. They are wrong. Moving intelligence or moving intelligence patterns of the human brain is purely data structures to another synthetic or biological substrate manifesting extremely damaging genetic mutations and perversions into the blueprint of the original silicate matrix, human DNA. AI genetic mutations in human DNA generate unforeseen diseases and miasma in the future, capable of destroying the organic consciousness potential that exists within the element of human body and the planetary body that destroys. Okay, now, I just, because I don't want to go so far 
as to, you know, keep you locked in. I want to give you something else now because it, it man, it goes a whole lot deeper than that, man. You know what I'm saying? Especially like, cause I'm going to go into translocation for you. And I'm just breezing through these, man. Like I promise, like I'm even going to do a, like a open, you know, like an open mic, man, to where, you know, we can actually expound on a lot of this information, man. And we're going to carry this out for a little while so that we can gain a better and a more clear understanding of the types of different MK Ultra things that have actually uh, happened, you know, all of these different things between like this Mandela effect and so many different things, bro. But now, translocation. DNA fire codes are related to time vectors and as such, they are relational to being able to function in a consciousness transport in between time fields. Just check them, man. DNA fire codes are related to time vectors and as such, they are related to being able to function in a consciousness transport in between time fields. When there is change directed in a planetary magnetic field that shifts electromagnetism, whether natural or artificial, the result is that is directly stimulating changes to occur in the DNA and its fire code. There are natural consciousness transfer functions in a diamond sunlight body that have been mutated and reversed on the earth to prevent their access. Now, there are three main ways to describe the stages of consciousness transport in a diamond sun template that allows us to move our consciousness between this point in time and another point in time or outside of time. These extend into further stages more complex than dream walking because they are direct functions of the activated diamond sun body. These are transfiguration, translocation, and transmigration. Now, translocation, the second stage of this translocation, the level is, uh, this level is when the consciousness is able to transfigure a portion of your atoms into light, meaning the physical body can be transfigured into light. Now, in previous stage, in the previous stage, the light, uh, the light body was left here on Earth, and the person is projected uh, their consciousness out. They are going somewhere else and looking at that, uh, looking at the view. So, like in you know the streams of like maybe astral projection and stuff like this. I know you guys have maybe some of you are familiar with it, uh, being able to actually project your consciousness into other different spaces or timelines. But I'll get a little bit deeper into this. So that the person can go and visit somewhere else and take a portion of their atoms of their or their light body with them while they travel. During translocation, a person is still encrypted with connected or uh, encrypted or connected to the space-time location of where they were physically born. Now just check me out. During translocation, a person is still encrypted or connected to the space-time location of where they were physically born. As an example, say the body transfigures into light and the person travels to another planet. The people on the planet that is being visited are going to know that person is from the earth because that person is still holding the space-time location of where they come from. If they were born, I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, of where they were born, the identity that that person has is still holding the encryption of the birth transduction sequence that energetically reveals that person is from the earth. So that means that part of you is still genetically keyed to the earth body and that the energetic, uh, energetic, uh, energetic signatures reveals the location of where your identity was born. Translocation means that we can transfigure a portion of our physical body to go someplace else, but we still have the genetic imprint from, uh, genetic imprint from our parents and where we were born on the planet earth. Now, if this don't give you a much, you know, clearer understanding, man. Uh, like I say, fam, what we up against right now, you know, just so that we can uh, take more control of it, you know? Now, I know I just went in on that, and I know that was a long time. I just wanted to give you a little bit of information to get y'all going, man, because see, now we are starting to understand what's taking place inside of the reality. These people ain't as innocent as you actually think they are. They're manipulating the strings behind everything, but because you don't know how it's actually happening, you don't even believe that it's happening. Because even the very conversation of introducing some of this information to you without being able to physically uh, prove or show you the inscriptions of the technology and the documents or the records of it being kept by the people that pushed this shit out here like this on you, 
then you wouldn't even understand it or believe anything. So it just goes to show you that, man, this is what we're doing. This is what we're actually here for. A lot of us spend our time studying this, and whether you know it or not, we come into not just the contact of our own spiritual inclinations that we start to experience inside of our own mind, because when you study this information, you become it. When you start to study interdimensional exploitations and shit, uh, stuff like this, how these people uh, come into different planetary systems in and out, and uh, let's just say rape, rob, and pillage these planetary systems, and you actually learn that. Man, you can go a lot of different places inside of your mind. And I promise we're going to start showing people, this is what I'm specifically, family, is going to get into showing you how to literally, like remember that movie, Jumpers? Now, don't get it wrong. I can't show you how to jump like that. Now, I can show you how to literally project your consciousness into any place or anything that you desire. Meaning that if you literally wanted to, you can literally leave this body behind and project your consciousness into a picture, an image, or anything. Like you really have this much power. You have this much capability. It's just that because all of your consciousness, all of your focus, all of your awareness is literally inside of this physical body. All you think about has something to do with this physical body. You see what I'm saying? So your ability to understand or to be able to ascend or scale the heights of this physical realm is slim to none until you unweave all of the things that are interchangeably holding you down mentally. You see what I'm saying? These people are doing this, family, because they are trying to control the direction of the ascension, meaning that whether you know it or not, Evolution is a consciousness thing, and evolution can be hindered. Evolution can be reversed. Like planets have been reversed upon their axis, sucked into phantom matrices or matrix matrices, black holes. This is what I'm trying to show you, family. So, excuse me. Instead of arguing, bitching, and bickering with everybody about the reality and what's going on. Listen, man, we need to literally now start to come together because these people already have a system built and designed that will literally make sure that we get caught uh, with our pants down. Meaning that we get caught like the banana in the tail, but we, we, we constantly fall for this shit every time. The same people that are committing all of this shit, they're the same people that own all your media channels, they own all your record labels, they own all of this, man, because they are using a fictitious currency to monopolize and control the world. Meanwhile, everything that is used to back that currency, they're snatching it out of circulation or existence and putting it somewhere where you will never actually get to access it because they're trying to make sure that you don't even know it exists. You see, all I'm saying is that, man, listen, I don't want to keep y'all no longer, man. I gave y'all enough information to free you, bro. I love y'all. Wholeness and balance, man.